the gift that my parents gave me. It wasn't money, it wasn't physical attention, anything like that. They left art books out on the table. And those art books educated me to composition and to light and contrast, dark and black shadows, Caravaggio style, all that. And I grew up with that as a kid thinking, well, you know, I draw and I can paint and sculpt. Maybe someday I'll be an artist. So I thought about it, but I realized my real talent was in photography. My picture in my book of uh, James Coburn is done after a Caravaggio. Not the same pose, but I use the same lighting. When I look at somebody's face, I decide where the light should be, and I don't manipulate them too much, but I sort of know the bounce light and the window light and all these things. And so uh, I generally stay away from the subject enough so they can't even see my face behind the camera. And I shoot with telephotos for a lot of portraits because that distance keeps them a little safe from me. If I, I, I'm too close and I move in for a close, it makes people nervous. And also there's distortion, and a lot of photographers do that. I would never do that. My deal was not to become famous as a photographer. It was to make my friends look good. You have to understand, many of these people were friends from before photography. I wasn't thinking of the new fashion. I was thinking of beautiful, attractive 60s style clothes on all these groups I'm shooting. I shot hundreds and hundreds of groups that aren't in my book. I mean, there's not ending. But I always insisted that they look good in their clothing. And what happened with the doors, uh, first of all, I love their music. And, you know, I was a California guy and they're a California band. They're at the whiskey. They couldn't be better. About the clothing and designing that cover, I had to take his shirt off. It was so easy for me to get this shot. I recognized his beauty. I knew him from UCLA. We were in philosophy class together. And so when he walked in, you know, I didn't recognize him because his hair was long, but it was Jesus-like. And I, in the back of my mind, was thinking, I'm not going to make him Jesus, but I'm going to give him that look. That's why his head is up like this, and the lighting's coming across his body. And I did it like a Caravaggio again, you know, with black, deep blacks. When I put the three guys on the side like that, I knew I had a cover, but I had had another cover already designed. It was a double exposure shot, different completely. And I was really happy with it, but I knew the one that we used would be the one. I hardly knew them, I have to say. I just spent the afternoon with them. They were mercurial, you know, they were in, out, gone. I loved the music, Forever Changes, just beautiful. And so, very hip group and avant-garde, and so I really liked them. But I wanted more time with them, so I didn't get much time. So I created a shot of love, and I put them together in six or seven pieces on a white background. And I did that because there was no way to put them all together as a group, so I made them all individual, and it worked, and we used it for a back cover. I have to be honest with you, because we were stoned. We had lit a bowl in the small living room of this apartment where they were staying, and now it's time to go outside to take a photograph, and there's stairs going down, honest to God, 50 feet straight down. I'm going, well, my cameras, I'm not going down those stairs, uh-uh. I said, let's do it right here. And there was this bathroom next door to the living room that was this green tile. I said, this is perfect. It's California. Get in the bathtub, fully clothed, and we'll shoot it there. And they're stoned. If you look at their faces on the cover, it's obvious. And I shot it. I can't believe that I could get the image because of I was as stoned as I've ever been. And it worked. Franklin Canyon with Simon and Garfunkel, they were great. Um, I really enjoyed them. It was before they were famous. They didn't know, I swear to you, how big they were becoming. And um, I liked them. They were educated. It turned out that Paul Simon was a Dickensian scholar. So I'm going, this guy's for me. We've got to get to talking. So we spent the day together, and we had a great time. After the shooting's over and it's getting dim outside, I take him over to meet my parents at my father's house, and uh, my dad starts talking to Paul, and they're starting to discuss Dickens. And my dad says, well, I'll show you my Dickens library. And Paul went nuts because my father had all of Dickens' first editions. Paul says, would you like to hear our song? I don't have an album with me. I can't play you the song, but I'll sing it for you. 
So he goes out to his car, Paul, for his rental car, brings back a full guitar, and Art sits right next to him, and the two of them sing Sounds of Silent privately for my father and me. My father couldn't believe that this was considered rock and roll, because he hated rock and roll, what he thought was rock and roll. And then uh, he goes, oh my God, this is great, poetic. And for me, he's one of the great songwriters of all time, this guy. And the Rolling Stones were like business people. They said, you know, they're working class, Liverpool types, and they saw money in this rock and roll. They never thought they'd have longevity. I took them back into Franklin Canyon, which was a ranch my girlfriend owned. So I took them in there with a limousine, the whole thing, and we shot there and had a great time. And I did some introspective type shots. I wanted to be more in tune with nature for the first time because they had always been hard, cold Liverpool. And so this was my way of shifting that. What makes color great is an artist like Bertolucci. Okay, then you'll see color used, or Antonioni, where it's used by Storaro, one of the great cinematographers. You have to learn to light it so the colors in the background are there for emotional support, but not to take over the scene. I'm the same. When I'm shooting, um, I darken the background if I have to. What I do is eliminate anything out of my pictures that isn't essential to the picture. I don't want anything to take your eye away from where I'm telling the story. If it's a face, I keep it lit brighter, more interestingly than the rest, and I try to burn out the backgrounds. I particularly like deep blacks, so you can imagine what's back there rather than be told. And I've been doing that with my color film, too. Dean Martin, I grew up with his children, and I was kind of their babysitter and uh, went out with one of the daughters. One day he calls me up and he says, Guy, come on over, uh, I got something you gotta see. So I come over, if he says that, you're gonna go. So sitting in his driveway is a brand new, gorgeous Triumph Bonneville and gorgeous aluminum tank with the name Dino, peckered in like a woodpecker kind of thing, Dino, on the aluminum tank. Such a beautiful bike. And he says, hey, they gotta photograph me going up the driveway, I want you here because you're a motorcycle guy. And I go, Okay, he starts it up, and boom, he goes up the driveway. I swear to God, 100 feet, he calls me over. Hey, guy, you want this thing? I go, what do you mean? He says, I can't drive a motorcycle in my contract. I'm not allowed to have one. I want you to have it. And I'm going, Dean, you must be kidding. Unbelievable. And I'm just saying this straight out. In my life, my parents gave me nothing, okay? Dean was the first person that ever gave me a real present. Nicholson, one of the smartest, most talented men in show business. Let me tell you about Jack Nicholson. He's smart enough to know if you're going to have your picture taken, give something to the photographer. He gives it to you all the time. Brilliant. And one of the, for me, one of the nicest guys in the business. Brian Wilson, I authentically love. He is as close to the top of the pyramid of musical songwriters. His songs are fun to dance to, and they're beautiful, soul-searching songs. So for me, I would say he's up there with the Beatles, with Bob Dylan, just by chance, because I, I used to work with the guys a lot, but by chance I'm there when they're doing uh, Good Vibrations. And I'm out in the lobby with them while Dennis is mixing in the back room, and they're practicing ooey's, and I couldn't believe it. I, I, I knew the moment I heard it, this was going to be an anthem for their time period. It was just brilliant. And I know a hit song when I hear it because I grew up with that business. The music today is great if you know where to find it. You're not going to find it on TV, on AM radio. You have to search out some tiny little station somewhere where they're playing alternative music. And I do. And they've got it on Sirius and other places. So you can still hear great music being written today. But is there anything like the 60s and 70s? No. Then we had protest music, we had anti-war music, and they were real and they were honest and they inspired kids. Now everybody's asleep. The whole country's asleep. They watch TV, watch football, drink beer, asleep. 
I'm sad about that.